All right, time frame approval the approval of the proposal modification. A few comments, of course, for the requirement of the title of the statute 293 uh, I for the proposed registration aid of the city move to make and determine whether the approval of the sponsor of the proposal for the application for the modification registered the program within 45 days of the receipt of the existing regulatory regulation simply provide with the problem of submission for the request for the modification set no time for, for the registered agency. Provide notice of guidance for the way that the registered agency would not prefer. Must do to process the application modification. Um, commenters asserted within the 45 days that would not provide sufficient time for the review of the comment, with the, um, in particular with the proposed requirement, would not align with the schedule of the state apprenticeship of the council that only meet the quarterly every, even every day within every 90 days of the review of the proposal modification and registered apprenticeship program. Other than the commenters did not support the proposed 45 time, day time trial um, time frame with the registration of the agency to make the determination whether they approve of the such submission with the regular response in late. In light with the quarterly meeting, the schedule with the youth of the many states and with the apprenticeship council with the state apprenticeship agency with the review of the proposal modification in 90 days with the time frame is more appropriate for the registered agency to make. Determination with the approval of the such submission, we also clarify the approval of the registered agency will record the knowledge of the modification within 90 days with the approval of the final with the statute 293I. Um, also clarify that the modification or not reviewed with the registered agency will notify the sponsor for the disapproval to provide with the reason, therefore, with the final 293I, but there has been changed accordingly. The criteria for the apprenticeship occupation is 29.4. Section 29.4 provides the criteria for determining the occupation qualified for the apprenticeship within the provision proposed with an NPRM with the line with the 29.4, with the change with the way of the progress for the apprenticeship program as discussed further with the discussion 295B2. So the commenters raised with the question concerned with the deletion and the term of the skill trade with the inconsistent relief between an apprenticeship occupation with the requirement of the hours around the job, learning and competency-based approach for the completion of the prevention program provided with the final 295B2. Definition of skilled trade. A common is raised with the concern with the deletion of the term skilled trade with the described with the apprenticeship occupation association with the term that is recognized nationally in the construction industry as a commonly, a commonly used response. We acknowledge that all the skilled trade is nationally recognized with the term of the construction industry with the emphasis of the deletion of the term of the regulation for the national apprenticeship system and is not meaning to discourage this and continue with the term. However, the apprenticeship expands to the new industry would have the term with not more generic approach with the better to reflect the terminology for the variety of the industry that including accordingly we we have not added but the skills rate to the final rule however the on the job learning some comments suggested that requiring at least 2,000 hours of on the job work experience entitled to statute 29.4c with the conflict for the competency based approach for outline of the 29.5b2 with the response of 22,000 hours stand for the 29.4c with the solely with the purpose of the, uh, uh, helping to fan an apprenticeship occupation in order for the occupation to be considered an apprenticeship that must be an occupation with it with it, and learning and it will be conducted with a traditional on the job manner would require at least 2,000 hours of the job learning as in discussed with more fully with the next section on the standard of the apprenticeship on the time base of the apprenticeship program with the required to provide at least 2,000 hours of the actual on the job training learning competency based or hybrid programs also will be required to provide on the job learning with the but the required hours will be varied with the vibe of the program the comments for the section bought brought to the light of the inconsistent with the interchangeable use of the term of the on the job training with the work experience throughout the proposed r rules to refer to the on job learning component with the registered agent registered apprenticeship with the requirement of the statute 29.4c with the 29.5b2 we have replace the terms on the job training with on the work uh, on the job work experience with the term on the job learning of the route after the final rule standard apprenticeship for the 29 and 5 the proposed change of the 29 and 5 regarding with the stated the standard of the apprenticeship received with many of the comments over the 132 comments per head pertaining to you for the comments the appropriate to approve the progression throughout the apprenticeship or other significant area of the interest center for the related the instruction of the apprenticeship and instructor certification advanced training credit transfer the interim credentials and cancelization relate the apprenticeship of the count apprenticeship of the, of the approach the reapproach of the completion of the apprenticeship of the statute Section 29.5b, which based on the existing requirement of the on-the-job learning with the must be consistent with the industry practices, present three methods for the being an individual apprenticeship that may be grasped toward the industry standard with work experience. These methods are one-time based approval uh, approach involving the completion of the 2,000 hours of on-the-job work experience, two competency based approach involving the successful to demonstrate for the acquired skills and knowledge of the apprenticeship that is verified with the program sponsor, plus on-the-job learning component, but the three, the hybrid approach involving the completion of the specific, specific num minimum number of the hours plus successful demonstration of the competency. Man, many com commenters raised with the question they asked clarification about the pro three approaches. Many of the commenters question whether the competency-based model would require the on-the-job learning with the most of the commenters expressed with the concern that they proposed the term that would not adequately define the industry should be equipped with the monitor, monitor validity and achieve
achieve the standardization that existing the existing minimum standards would be a compromise for the community based of the organization paid with the proposed three approach of the exciting the study for the indicate for the non traditional apprentice such as woman are more likely to complete um, the program is such a requirement for the pre apprenticeship training program were recognized for the competency based for the youth of the hybrid approach several commenters expressed for the concern for the competency based for the hybrid method for the completion of the apprenticeship would be allow the apprenticeship to circumvent on the job learning with related technical instruction with the demonstrated the acquired skill for the knowledge and other commenters expressed an apprehension over the potential of the safety compromise particularly in the construction quality and the needs for the of safeguards of the welfare of the apprenticeship and on one commenter asserted that the competency base of the apprenticeship program would not require the competence apprenticeship to demonstrate the competency in the real time distraction sometimes with the noisy sometimes dirty often the unpredictable environment many of the commenters interpreted the purpose Proposed 295B2 with the main all the program the sponsors would have to adapt to all three of the approaches of the completion with the apprenticeship pro um, the, this rule carries carries fully the traditional model because of the, it has worked with well in many of the occupations that have you for the time approach based approach for the registered apprenticeship. We expect that the most programs sponsors in those occupations will continue for the approach. However, as part of the department's strategic emphasis of the meeting with the training need for the business and work in our policy expands, the apprenticeship has become particularly with the traditional time based approach of the time and training that does not fit with the norms of the, all the industry with the occupation seeking the youth. Use of the registered apprenticeship model with the final rule acknowledges the need for the industry preferred to continue with the redime based approach with the registered apprenticeship as well as those industries that require more flexibility with the hour and how an apprenticeship can attain can attain the journey work, worker level of proficiency. We agree that the clarifying language is required with all the three approaches to ensure the job, the job learning of the required with the component with all the apprenticeship program paragraph two with the twenty nine statute twenty nine five B with the two with the revive with including the additional language specifying with the programs using the competency based approach must still require an apprenticeship to complete with on the job of the learning component with the rule of register. All right, apprenticeship. We emphasize that on the job learning remain for the primary method of the apprenticeship of the game with the substantive competency and yes, sir, for the successful completion of the competency base for the hybrid apprenticeship program. And the apprenticeship program used for the competency base for the hybrid approach does not exempt the apprenticeship of the, uh, from participating in fundamental elements of registered apprenticeship on the job learning related for the instruction. The Office of the Apprenticeship of the Kinds for the Competency Base for the Hybrid Apprenticeship Curriculum 2005-03 with the described the program sponsor for the apprenticeship can comply with the requirements of the minimum on the job learning with each of the work pro major work process of the each of the Competency based or hybrid approach outlined in Statute 295B2. The additionally, measured materials available on the carrier one stop website or http double colon backslash backslash w dot careers on one st career one stop org or com slash competency model. For an example, the recently approved the competency based apprenticeship program in the advance of the manufacturing health of the care and industry. The example of the showcase of the depth and the breadth of the breadth of uh, breadth, uh, breadth of the information required for the define the competency establishing proficiency level of the competency develop the test and value. For today, for said competency, with the guidance reinforced with the competency based model, but does not negotiate requirements over the on job learning related to the instruction. Such as the requirements will ensure that all apprenticeship will expose the workplace with the condition properly trained in the safety requirements essential for the industry. Neither a proposal nor the final rules required with the program signed with the registration agency to adopt all three approaches of the new paragraph 4 but as it has been adapted in statute 295b2 to clarify the determination for the appropriate approach for the program sponsor um, standards and they made with the program sponsor subject with the approval of the registration agency the determination is appropriate for the approach for a principal apprenticeable occupation for the which the program standards are registered we seek to provide a flexible variety of industry greater flexibility option option for the approach for addressing the talent development needs for through the apprenticeship of the discussed in the NPMR business industry labor that have been and requests with the more flexible accountability national apprenticeship system that meets the workforce development needs of the pilot program which sponsors the measured apprenticeship attaining of the certain skills and the competency rather than using. Traditional time based approach made with the new business labor and industry of the partner of the national apprenticeship system have found the competency base with the apprenticeship to provide with the flexibility, accountability necessary to be used. Registered apprenticeship in the respective industry and occupation final tw uh, statute 295B2 provides a greater flexibility with the registered apprenticeship program to draft the devel career development plan for the registered apprenticeship as we had emphasized with the NPMR. The three approaches that reflect the experience of the traditional building construction trade for the industrial sector with the youth of the time made apprentices while addressing the need for the need for the emerging industry seek within that participate with the national apprenticeship system. Therefore, we anticipate the program sponsors will use the approach with the best means um, meets the needs for the particular industry. We do not intend to discourage the youth of the time based approach in those occupations in which with the what has been proven successful, nor if any of the new occupations that lend themselves to the approach related instruction. 
The majority of the comments and provisions related to the supplemental instructions stated that the training through the use of the electronic media proposed within Statute 295B4, but it should be supplemented as suppliant, not, not suppliant, and replaced with the apprentice bound going face to face interaction classroom time. But the instructor, some of the commenters, suggested the department clarify the electrical media can be used as a supplemental of the classroom instruction, but that is not substitute for the instructor and apprentice bound interaction. There must be many suggestions that the electronic media should not be allowed with the use of uh, as sole method the very related to technical instruction as it would be to open the mid widespread widespread misuse of the mismanagement. Others suggest that the regulations require that the majority of the significant portion of the related instruction should be provided through in person sh- instruction. Other commenters supported the use of the electronic media and related instruction because it enf- en- enhances the flexibility and registered apprenticeship and then recognized with the new training methods and technology response. The inclusion of electronic media with the related instruction with the critical with the line with the national apprenticeship position and the technical advance of the appropriate industry with the application of such advances section 295B4 does not require all the industry of the apprenticeship program to meet must use with electronic media rather than its permits to use electronic media as a tool to support industrial learning styles the section 295B4 retains other methods of the related instruction such as classroom, occupational, and Industrial course with other instructions approved with the registra- by the registration agency, the center of which an apprenticeship program and incorporated with electronic media into provisions related to instruction depends on the learning objective for the particular occupation associated with the program. And therefore, the regulatory framework for the, how the apprenticeship should be not satisfied with how related technical instruction will be delivered. Such de- um, such decisions are most, most appropriately determined by the program sponsor subject to approval of the registration agency. The pro- provisions. Through the provisions registration process, the review of the modification registered program that is established in 293 GH from YI registration agency will coordinate with the program sponsor to identify the appropriate method, uh, method of the providing the related technical instruction to the registered agency and evaluation program performance for the quality insurance assessment process and established in the 296B, which will identify any assets for any changes. And as in related with the technical instruction and in effect with the overall operation quality of the program to further address the concern regarding the inappropriate and effectiveness of the electronic media than the provision of related technical instruction, the Office of Apprenticeship will consult with the state apprenticeship agencies to develop its further um, further guidance for the illustration or appropriate use of electronic media. Your apprenticeship instructor qualification proposed with requirements for an apprenticeship instructor will be similar state with the requirements such as the meeting with the state of the Department of Education requirements of the vocational technical instructor with the other be recognized with the subject matter expert will require the instruction of the training and teaching with the techniques of adult learning styles. A common few commons generally supported with the proposed qualification for the apprenticeship instructor in twenty nine five B four because they would raise the quality of the apprenticeship instruction such as common state with the proposed changes did not adequately define the subject matter expert. Or provide the guidance for how the expansion program of the registered agency should make the determination who may be the concerned with the subject matter expert other to agree with the concept of improving the quality of the apprenticeship. Instructors must be stated proposed change with the overall restrictive with requiring all the instructors to be certified with all the may the state vocational education instructor requirements of the commoners question whether the junior workers will have to be certified with the state vocational educational entity in order to achieve the regulated instruction component of the registered apprenticeship. Some commoners assert that the proposed text of the text will eliminate the use of the journey workers as a subject matter with the expertise of the technical experts. Some of the um, commoners supported with the proposed requirement of statute twenty nine five B four with the apprenticeship instructor having the training and the teaching the techniques of adult learning styles. Others requested clarification on this requirement. We agree with the proposed that the rule did not provide the adequate guidance for the flexibility for the instruction qualifications. Accordingly, we have revised Statute 295B4 to clarify the apprenticeship instructor must either be the State Department of Education requirements for a vocational technical instructor or be a uh, subject ma- 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 material expert. The rule is clarifies the subject matter experts are, or individuals who are recognized within the industry of having expertise in specific occupation. Journal workers can be considered subject matter experts, therefore may be... Uh, Appropriate instruction related technical instruction provision statute 295B4 with requiring instructors to have training of the technique, um, teaching techniques of adult learning styles will further ensure quality of the instruction of the national apprenticeship system. Training and understanding of the teaching um, techniques and adult learning styles will enhance the instructor and effectiveness, thereby improving the learning experience of individual apprenticeship with overall the national apprenticeship system. So, if the training may be provided with the apprenticeship program through an accredited institution or higher learning may occur before and after the apprenticeship instructor has been started, provided the related technical instruction related probationary period. Probationary period. 17 commenters expressed for the concern of the length of the probationary period, but not defined with the proposed in Statute 295 B19, but which provided the simplicity cancellation during a apprenticeship probationary period will not adversely impact the sponsor's completion rate. The completion rate is a new factor for the evaluation of the program performance proposed in Statute 296 B. 
Several commenters have suggested that the time of the specific is not exceeding time, but the probation and period of such as 15% or 20 progress time over the program length, but the many of the commenters were concerned with without the time of the um, without a time limit on the probationary and period with the proposed regulations could permit any apprenticeship program to leave with apprenticeship and then probationary status for an extended period of time in an effort to improve the program's performance with the rating of the concealing with the program deficiencies. We agree that without the limit of the probationary period with the regulation could allow the information the using the calculation and completion rates to be skewed, thereby impacting the evaluation program performance in the recognition of the concern with the commenters, we have added language in 20 statute 295 b 8 limiting the length of the probationary period. Historically, national guideline for the apprenticeship standard recognized by the Office of Apprenticeship has been used for 25% of the length of the program benchmark according with the final rules provided for the probationary period um, that cannot exceed 25% of the length of the program in one year, whichever the shorter. Advanced standing of the credit. The two commenters are discussed in 295B12 with the provided with the granting of the apprenticeship demand for the standing of the credit into taking account with the demonstrated competency of one of the commenters asserted that the proposed rule was going to be reduced on the job learning of the possibility of compromising safety and health. The other commenter expressed concern on about how the sponsor would evaluate the competency of the response. The provision with the grant of the apprenticeship demand for the standing of the credit would not enable to get in negative negatively impact the safety and health because of the discussed bit above the apprenticeship are still required to have an on job learning of them related with the instruction to enable the apprenticeship to recognize the product of the themselves from safety and health hazards with the um, regarding the valuation competency for the sponsor will use the definition for the competency of the statute 292 which provides for the sponsor with the use of the appropriate written hand on proficiency provi um, measurement of the provision of final statute 295 b12 are necessary to support the flexible approach of progression through the apprenticeship to identify the statute 295 b2 according no changes have been made in the provision for the granting um, advanced standing or credit Transfer. 27 commenters raved for the question for the proposed change, but which required for the program sponsor for the committee to provide the transfer of apprenticeship within the transcript related training with the on the job learning complete, um, completed with the permanent transfer of the either the same or the related occupation. All allowance for the employer for the program sponsor for the initiated the transfer to stipulate the transfer must occur without the adverse impact on the apprenticeship and employer for the program. Many of the commenters raved with concern about how many transfers would be initiated with the process of the executing with the transaction. Commenter question with whether the proposed provision would permit an apprenticeship to unilaterally transfer the one program to without the, without the consent of the program sponsors. The commenters suggested the transfer should be am, admissible for all sides with the transfer apprenticeship that should be tested and ensure the proper placement with the new apprenticeship program. The other commenters asserted that the involuntary transfer could virtually impact with the affected apprenticeship with the affected apprenticeship program sponsor of the committee. Then another commenter question with whether the proposed ruling requires the acceptance of the transfer of the commenters state that the modifying of the section of the rule should be solely stated in sponsor of responsibility. We agree that the commenters have valid concern about the unilateral decision with the apprenticeship of the transfer of the potential for the inverse for the impact with the fact that the party with the according we have raised buys 295B13 to provide the transfer that must be based on agreement between the apprenticeship and the effect of the apprenticeship committee with the program sponsor but the apprenticeship cannot unilaterally transfer one program to another from one employer to the another employer in the same program without inconsistent without the consistent of the effect of the apprenticeship committee with the program sponsor. We disagree with this modification to the 259 295 b 13 sh um, should be solely in the state and sponsor responsible for the regulatory frame with the national apprenticeship system establishing that this part must address the issue of the transfer to ensure all the apprenticeship with regard to the geographical location program sponsors that have the equal, equal uniform access to the same provision with this transfer however the procedure with the administrative issue is associated with the transferring apprenticeship for the testing, the determination, appropriate placement of the apprenticeship of the main, with the reaching agreement among the affected party, but the probably a draft of the policy guidance for the issue of the Office of Apprenticeship rather than the regulatory framework of the National Apprenticeship System, according to the Office of the Apprenticeship, we will consult with the apprenticeship program sponsors and state apprenticeship agencies to develop an issue guidelines effectively address these concerns. The subbing, several commenters said with the provision proposed in Statute 295B.13.2, which would permit the transfer of the related occupation within the same occupation, would not benefit the apprenticeship, especially if the program sponsor and employer where should shift apprenticeship between the job and task without ensuring the proper skills within the knowledge and development. The three commenters suggested the transfer must be within the same occupation or, the or, or trade. One commenter noted that many of the apprenticeship programs in the building of the construction industry have the provisions of these standards for the transferring of the apprenticeship to the other programs within their occupations. The response was that the proposed revision requirement that the transfer were intended to benefit the apprenticeship by providing greater flexibility should he, he or she demonstrate the transferring of another apprenticeship program was necessary to accommodate the variations in his or her career development plan, the proposed change were not intended to provide program sponsors with unlimited latitude to the apprenticeship among the different um, accountability occupations accommodated with the sponsor workforce needs. We been persuaded by the commoners' assertion that the apprenticeship does not meet the journey worker in a skilled 
trade by transferring the skilled trade the skilled trade such as an operating engineer working as such as a carpenter electrical electrician or painter also there is a some valid with concern with the reference of related occupation could be ambiguous overly broad and could result in the transfer into the different trade the occupation for which the apprentice has no training under the guise gu- guises be for being related further it would be Further, it would be unreasonable to expect the employer to pay a transferring apprenticeship commonstrated period wages with apprenticeship um, with appropriate occupational experience. Therefore, the final rule carries forward existing provisions with limit transfer to the same occupation. Other commenters suggest that the provision proposed in Statute 295 b 13 would require that the committee of the program to provide the transferring apprentice with the transcript of the latest instruction on the job learning with the encourage the recruitment between the apprenticeship program instead of focusing on the grade of the outreach. The response, we have not changed the requirement that the transferring apprenticeship must be provided with the transcript. The requirement for the program sponsored by the committee for the providing of the transfer apprenticeship with the transcript of the related instruction on the job learning is necessary for the regular aligning national apprenticeship system the post-secondary training with the educational system with the credential system. Those systems provide participation with the documentation of what would they have learned with the particular course of serious instruction on the training program, just with the provisions of the final rule um, with, uh, requiring agreement with long among the apprenticeship of the effective apprenticeship committee for the program sponsored for the transfer will mitigate the potential for the program sponsored to focus on recruiting between the programs as discussed above with the program, which my apprenticeship that is originally um, registered must agree with the t- transfer in addition with the final rule to continue to serve with the purpose of the existing statute 295B13, which allowed for the employer to transfer in the training obligation with another employee with the consistent with the apprenticeship with the apprenticeship committee program sponsor as discussed above the department does not foresee with the transfer apprenticeship registration from one program to another from one employer to the other and would occur with frequently with the regularity the intent of her provisions to provide flexibility for the apprenticeship to continue his or her apprenticeship in changing the circumstances Interim credential. The change of the proposed in Statute 295B15 would add provision for the issuance of the interim credential, the recognition of the apprenticeship that has attained skill to satisfy and apply the certain requirements as he or she progresses through the competency based on their hybrid apprenticeship program. The proposed provision also carries forward with the existing requirement for the issuance of the certificate, completion of the recognition of the successful completion of the apprenticeship program. We received, 93, we received 93 comments on the proposed Statute 295. B15. Some of the commenters expressed support for the interim credentials. Some of the several competitor, um, commenters in question the need for the provision of the internal credentials, while the others noted that the program sponsors employers. Others are ready to issue the such credentials response. Section 295B15 um, B continues to provide the does not existing rule for the certificate with the document successful completion for the apprenticeship program. However, the commenters have raised some of the valid concerns as the proposed requirement for the interim credential for the address for the issue, but to further clarify the requirements for the interim credential the final rule, separate the requirement for the interim credential to new desecrate the paragraph 295B16 that renumbers really all their subsequent paragraphs 295B as final 25, 295B17 through B, 295B23. The provided provision for the interim credentials were not intended to require all the program sponsors of the youth for the interim, but the credentials not even required that the sponsor choosing the youth with the competency based approach with a hybrid approach used to the interim credentials. Finally, Statute 295B16 clarifies that the program, soon as the apprenticeship program sponsor to choose the youth with the competency based or the hybrid approach with the completion of any of the apprenticeship they choose, the issue of the interim credentials was clearly identified the interim credentials demonstrate how the credentials link to the component with the apprenticeship occupation step with the process of the assessing with the individual apprenticeship to demonstrate the competency associated particular interim credential further the interim credentials must only be issued by the recognized components of the apprenticeship occupation thereby the linking interim credentials specifically to the knowledge and skills abilities associated with the component of the apprenticeship occupation commoners Commoners expressed concern with the use of the interim credentials would redefine the journey worker status and means that over the 20 commoners for the serve of the provision of the interim credentials to diminish the value of the deter, deter trainee for the obtaining the journal working, journey worker status. Other commoners misinterpreted with the provision of internal interim credentials as permitting the program sponsor to reduce the requirements for the on job learning. This would achieve the particular skill with the ability, thereby producing an inadequate training of the journey worker. For the sum of the commoners stated that these provisions could be weak in the workforce to produce work for workers that specialize rather than comprehensive training for. For the um, parts of the occupation, other commoners to serve. The ultimately insurance uh, issuance of the interim credentials could lead to the segment of the workforce working for lower wages and less job security. Response: We disagree with the assertion that the interim credentials may be potentially negative impact with the workforce, the value of the journey worker status is discussed. Both in some of the industry programs, the sponsor and in pilot for the commodity based program, apprenticeship program that already are using interim credentials, having determined that some of the principal occupations are capable of being segregated into discrete competencies or levels of skill attainment, which can um, serve as a uh, discrete milestone on the path on the path of journey worker status, providing interim credentials so. That to show that an apprenticeship has reached those milestones merely acknowledges the fact 
Therefore, the interim credentials are not intended to narrow the breadth or the depth of the training component with the registered apprenticeship, rather than they provide the important opportunity for the apprenticeship to attain portable credentials, commensurate with the skill of the competency acquired for the demonstrated through an apprenticeship program. Therefore, the attainment of the interim credentials may be provided, but the apprenticeship boy must leave the program who means to obtain the better job if he or she could without a credential. To discuss above the discussion, the definition in terms of credentials is issued with the certificate of the completion of the apprenticeship associated with the during worker level and status remain the ultimate goal for the national apprenticeship system. The interim credentials do not indicate that the apprenticeship has met all the of the requirements of the apprenticeship, nor he or she has successfully mastered the full range of the skills and competency required for the occupation. The certificate of the completion of the is thereby credential with the properly conveyed for the apprenticeship that has successfully met the requirements of the apprenticeship program. Therefore, the designation of the journey worker or journey worker is associated with the status will not be affected by the use of the interim credentials. However, in recognition of the stakeholders' concern over the impact of the interim credentials, the department will establish a process to assess the implementation of the interim credentials. Initially, registration agency program sponsors will use the quality assurance assessment process to identify and assess any of the impact of the interim credentials on the program operation outcome of the following consolation with the stakeholders of the National Apprenticeship System off of the apprenticeship intent for the use of the policy of the guidance of the review of interim credentials. 13 commenters, um, 30 commenters expressed the concern about the potential negative impact of the National Apprenticeship System if the interim credentials are based on sponsors the standard for the instead of the industry standard of the commenters assert that the national standards are necessary for the credentials may be portable um, and meaning to employers across the definition of different regions. Response. The National Apprenticeship System is sponsored for the only registered fan of the apprenticeship program that the train employed with the apprenticeship of the occupation that had been determined the apprenticeship will um, apprenticeship The office of the apprenticeship has um, established criteria for the received, the recognized for the apprenticeship of the occupation will require the industry verification validation for the skill knowledge necessary for the occupation of the process initially incorporated for the industry. Participation with the credentials associated with the profession through an apprenticeship program for an apprenticeship occupation will have the portable and have means to employers national more of the discuss above the news twenty nine five B sixteen clarify that interim credential must only be used to issue recognizing the components of an apprenticeship occupation, therefore the interim credentials associated with the specific skilled knowledge for the apprenticeship occupation are verified and validated by the industry through the process of proving the apprenticeship occupation. Numerous commenters suggest that the provision of interim credentials would place the additional resource, the time, and the documentation burden of the registration agency. No apparent provision, verification of the credential validity. Some commenters recommend that the use of the interim credentials should not be mandated, but it should be left to the discretion of the states to mandate. Um, response, while well, well, while considering interim credentials to be valuable to furthering apprenticeship we in the side of the program, sponsors are not required to develop and register a stand for the apprenticeship that include the interim credentials now are recognized for the state apprenticeship of the agency required to issue the interim credentials. We anticipate that such credentials will be used frequently by the programs that take a competency-based or hybrid approach with progression through the apprenticeship with further the department pilot for the competency-based with the apprenticeship program and the registered agency have provided technical assistance to sponsor the um, help of identify the appropriate procedure of the and criteria determining if and when with the appropriate merits of receiving the interim credential, the department anticipates the registration agency will continue to provide technical assistance in developing competency based hybrid apprenticeship programs. The issue of the interim credential associated with these programs, and with the certificate with the completion of the registration agency for the entity responsible for issuing the interim credentials at the request of the program sponsor. The Dortmund acknowledges the institution and process of the, um, process of the issuance of the interim credentials which can constitute an additional burden for those states' apprenticeship agency, those that currently or do not issue the such certification based on components of the expressing concern about the potential time and documentation burdens. We agree that the state apprenticeship agency should not be required to issue the interim credentials as preconditioned with the recognition according with the required, recognized state of the apprenticeship agency may choose the issue of the interim with the credential. We even their own procedure for compliance with the part with the final rules does not require them to do so, however, in order to maintain uniformity across the national apprenticeship system, the further apprenticeship progression through the apprenticeship of the department has the um, determined the opportunities must be available nationwide for the program sponsor to register the program standard the use of the competency based or hybrid approach for the completion of the apprenticeship without issue of the interim credential. Therefore, the office of the apprenticeship will offer the issue of the interim credential nationwide where the prerequisites are met with if recognized by the state apprenticeship agency registered the program standard that used for the competency base of the hybrid approach does not issue the interim credentials. The program sponsor may require for the office of apprenticeship to issue for the interim credentials to apprenticeship that we have successfully meet the requirements of the interim credential established in the program standards for their um, respective apprenticeship program. If the recognized state apprenticeship of the agency does not register the program standard to use the competency base for the hybrid approach, then a program 
Sponsor competition with the registered apprenticeship with the same with the office of apprenticeship for the federal purpose of the office of apprenticeship will issue the interim with the credential with the prerequisites that are met. Two commentators maintain with the made and the use of the interim credentials to cover the apprenticeship program to incur the enormous cost of developing testing to determine whether the apprenticeship is entitled to interim credential. The um, response discussed above the final rules does not maintain the use of the interim credentials. Program sponsors use the registered stand with the competency based of the hybrid program to provide the issues for the interim credentials that would bear the cost associated with developing and operating with the apprenticeship program that all registered apprenticeship program sponsored voluntarily operate with the apprenticeship program and choose to incur the costs associated with the program. Cancelization. 17 commenters expressed with the concern of the length of the probation are people defined with this proposed 295B1319 with the provided the simplicity and cancellation during the apprenticeship probation are people will not adversely impact the sponsor's completion rate. Completion rate and the new factor for the evaluation program performance proposed by the statute 296B and 20C. Several commenters suggest that defining specific economics to exceed the time of the probation period, such as 15% and 20% of the program length. Like many of the comments were concerned that without the time limit on the probation period, the proposed regulation could promote the apprenticeship program to leave the apprenticeship and probation status for an extended period of the time and effort to improve the program performance rating of the concealing uh, pro, uh, the program's deficiency. Twelve common um, commenters believe you know, that not the counting cancelization during the probationary period with the line with the program's adjusting the length of the probationary period with the artificially improve the completion rate. Other felt that the cancelization rate during the probation period and properly categorized and be used to evaluate the pro pro program performance. Some of the commenters state that it would be important to the monitor program to have the high rate of attrition, attri 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 attrition to during the probation period to check for abuse, other advocates of that only cancelization that were due to the failure. Provided in the training accordance with the sponsor to prove that the standard should be counted with the completion rate the strength of the proposed rule for the inclusion of the cancelization rate for the probation period with the calculation of the completion of the rate due design to distinguish between those cancelization that were followed with the program and those over other which the program has little in any, any control. We agree that if it's important with the monitor program for the high cancelization rate during the probation period for the many years the office of apprenticeship has included the cancelization rate as a factor for consideration when the staff members that conduct um, quality assurance and assessment with the property has been used for the information for the provision, technical assistance, and program are sponsored with although the final rules does not provide for the inclusion and cancelization of the current during the probationary periods and the calculation of completion rate with the important with the information revived and evaluated addressed through the quality assurance um, assessment process. We also agree without the limit of the probationary period with the regulation could allow the information for the calculation completion rate with the scoop, thereby impacting the evaluation program performance. Recognizing for the concern with the commenters who have added language to the statute 295B8, limiting the length of the probation period, historically the national guideline for the apprenticeship standard recognized by the office of the apprenticeship has been used 25% of the length of the program benchmark accordingly to the final um, rule. Provided the probation period cannot exceed 25% of the length of the period for one year, whichever is shorter, we disagree that only the cancelization due to the failure to provide with the training in accordance with the sponsor approved with the standard for the be counted in completion rate program sponsor policy and administrative procedures should such as not providing the study of the workers' experience to reduce the apprenticeship of the opportunity in interim wages, thereby uh, cannot impact the apprenticeship of the ability to remain registered in the program. Therefore, analysis of the program cancelization rate can be provided with the important indicator of the need for the further evaluate with the program operation policy procedure. If need for the provide the technical assistance discussion further in the discussion of the program performance standard, we emphasize that the registration agency evaluation Completion rates will include the analysis of the mitigation factors. No substantive changes that have been made to propose 295B19, which will be promulgated in Statute 295B20. Program performance standards, statute 29.6 and 29.6 of the new section with the focus of the quality of the performance registered apprenticeship of the program. The few comments generally support the proposed change within the section, but question for the office of apprenticeship the bill with the successful value with the registered program to give it the current budget and the staff leveling. The department air agreed with the registration agents required with the adequate resource to successful evaluate all the registered program under the provision of the section. The office of apprenticeship of the staff has conducting quality assurance, assessment, equal opportunity with the operating compliance reviews, as well as part of the normal responsibility for the helping to ensure the program's master comply with the requirements of the the regulation with the part 30 with the process of the conducting of these review currently include the assessing of the program performance against the key indicators including the completion of the cancelization rate therefore the function of the calculation completion rates Conducting quality assurance and assessment, employment with the opportunity for compliance review from the providing the technical assistance as required with the final of the statute 29 that have effectively have been part of the office of apprenticeship with current with the practice for the evaluating monitoring programs to the extent of the office of apprenticeship with current resources that may not be, um, become construed with requirements of the section. We may realign resources internally to effectively and efficiently conduct these activities. 
at least one registered apprentice. Section 296A, with provided that every program must have at least one registered apprentice in order to designate or retain the designation as a registered apprenticeship program for the federal purpose of the common native reserve, term that there may be times when the program is between the training cycle that has no apprenticeship for a short period of time and other common to serve, that the provision does not adequately address the apprenticeship program with one or few apprentices that never graduate. Sometime for the commoners suggested establishing time frame for the determining if the program has an effect of the apprenticeship or apprentices. Response. We agree that there may be time, but the sponsor may have a lag of the between the training cycle to be without the registered apprentice for the first short period of the time. However, the program line of the dormant with a substantial period of the time that is appropriate to consider with the program is no longer available. Viable. Therefore, therefore, we agree with the, with the suggestion to establish time frame for the determining of the program of the active apprenticeship to account for the short lag of the time mentioned in common with the other reasonable period of the activity that may occur with the otherwise active program. We consider a period up to one year with the reasonable period of the activity with the determine that the time frame of the program to be not have the apparent apprenticeship registered with the registration agency should not exceed one year. We have provided statute 296A with accordingly. Regard with the commoners' assertion with the provision does not adequately address the program that never graduate with the apprenticeship requirements set forth in the 296B. Will those programs be accountable? Evaluation of the program performance. 28 comments addressed with the statute 296B with the provided with the non exclusive list of the tools and the factors that must be considered with evaluating the performance of the registered apprenticeship program. Nine commenters expressed concern that there is no proposed definition of the quality assurance assessment. One of the tools and factors to be considered in evaluating performance may request the definition of the completion of the rate. Other commenters request that the department to clarify the intent of the purpose of each of the performance tools and factors, how they are to be used. And one of the commenters suggests the adding requirement of the rule that the tools and factors could be consistent with the federal and standard of the goal of the states. Could it not add factors that conflict with the the Part 29 CFR Part 30 with the National Apprenticeship Act. Um, response. Um, we agree with the definition for the term of completion rate with the quality assurance assessment would be provided with greater clarity with the both performance act accountability framework established with the final rule. Accordingly, we would discuss above if we have additional definition of the term completion rate and quality assurance assessment statute 2019 with the three performance factors specifically required are quality assurance assessment, equal opportunity, opportunity, opportunity compliance reviews, and completion rates as discussed above in the discussion of the Definition of the statute 2019 with the quality assurance assessment of the comprehensive review of the conduct of the registration aid to determine the apprenticeship program with addressing the program standard with the meeting of the requirement of this part of the equal opportunity opportunity, opportunity compliance reviews are required under the part 130 with the data of the program completion rates of intended to provide registration agency with the information useful to support and technical assistance efforts to improve the program performance emphasized the additional and tools factors using registration agency evaluating program performance must adhere to the goals and policy with the department articulated in this part in the guidance issued by the office of transportation completion or apprenticeship your completion rate a registration registration agency with the completion rate with evaluating the program performance provided in the proposed statute 296b and c with the reviewed mixture mixed review one commenter served with the proposed rule will likely result in an annual effect of the on the economy of the hundred dollar hundred million dollars or more therefore the Proposed rule qualifies as a major rule under the Executive Order 1288 66. The Small Business Regulatory Enforcement is my acts. The commenter asserted that state and local governments are included in the bid provision with the requirement of the contract to do apprenticeship that will have um, successfully completed an apprenticeship of the program approved with the Department of the State and uh, Department and recognized with the State Apprenticeship Agency on the condition of the bidding of the participation on the project. The commenter asserted that the, such bid requirements will likely foreclose on the unilateral apprenticeship program sponsor from them being able to bid. Um, on and be awarded with the state local construction project, which will be likely for the annual adverse impact on the economy, economy exceeding $1 million. Although the comment did not mention the particular section of the rule, we have determined that the commenters established anticipated impact was primarily based on the expected cost of compliance with the statute 296 B and C. The commenter recommended that the determined withdraw with the proposed provision with the completion rate so that the officer of apprenticeship can conduct further study and discussion of the interested stakeholders. Many commenters have noted that the evaluation of the apprenticeship program on the basis of the completion rate would align with the national apprenticeship system on the federal education programs that make eligibility of the receipt of the federal funding depend dependent in part of the program's achievement of the minimal graduation rates. Other than state of the evaluation would improve the program accountability, ensure the higher quality of reflect the effect of the program. With however, the another commenter asserted that the reference completion rate the uniform, fair, unfairly unfairly penalize the program that make the form affirmative effort to recruit the apprenticeship with the different the national tradition pool with the dropout rate with the, the, for those recruited with the riskier group that may be higher than normal. Other commenters stated that the use of the completion rates could, should be also penalized. The small program with the completion rates can also be used, be affected dramatically with the cancellation of one or more two expansion agreements. Some of the 
Some commenters oppose the provision provided and proposed in 296B. C, with the provided with the evaluation completion rate, but the program is located in the same geographical area that is necessary for the further review and provision of the technical assistance for the maintain and improve of the program performance. One of the commenters asserted that there's one, uh, um, one areas, one, one areas are short sighted to compare the programs rather individually evaluate the program based on their merits. Another commenter characterized the particular provision and pro proposed provision as highly subjective and ambiguous, suggests that the standard should be set at a minimum completion rate above which. Um, the program's completion rate will not be deemed the negative factor. Another remark of the absence of the firm standard with the proposed regulation, other asserted that there's proposed requirements would favor the union operative programs do not nothing and do not do nothing to improve the apprenticeship program's response. The department does not does not agree with the evaluating completion rates that as an indicator of the program quality would be unfairly penalize the program with the group the non traditional application pool with nor that we agree with the completion rates with penalize the small program whose completion rates could affect with dramatically with the cancellation of one of the two apprenticeship agreements. The primary purpose of the completion rate evaluated is not to penalize the programs described below or the goal of this help is the assessment of the mechanism of identifying the programs that will benefit the technical assistance to become higher performance programs. The only when the program may demonstrate the persistence and significant failure to perform successful poor collection rates, um, completion rates, the actual potential to do registration procedure proceedings. We agree that comparing like with the programs, particularly when they were only by the comparable program in a uh, geographical area, we are not made. The, we are not be, and we may not be feasible, effective for the program for the evaluation completion rates. We also agree with the suggestion to establish a minimum completion rate above which the program completion rate will not be deemed a negative factor. But we have determined the national average of the apprenticeship completion would be a reasonable benchmark to use evaluating performance and register of the apprenticeship program for the purpose of identifying the programs and need the technical assistance. According with it, um, we have raised and revised the 20th century 2960 to require that the registration agency review the program completion rates and compare them to the national average of the completion rate of the program with the completion rates lower than the national average will receive. Technical essential for the registration agency is standard but in the NPRM. The use of the completion rate of the program review is not intended to limit the termination and terminate the existing apprenticeship program that they received the technical assistance from the registration agency, demonstrating the improved program performance or the impaired the prospect of apprenticeship program transfers rather than use of the completion rates and intended that the strength of the program outcome of the quality of the national apprenticeship system by setting a benchmark that identifies the program that could benefit the technical assistance. In order to complete the reflectively reflective the focus of the technical decision for the program with the completion rates below the national average will have dropped the reference to the period with the probes century twenty nine sixty for the registration agency take other appropriate actions against such of the program to leash with the phrase the man will clarify the simplifying um, simply falling below the national average of the completion rate does not leave the deregistration procedure. Completion rates may be potentially factored in a deregistration procedure only when demonstrating an out ongoing pattern with the very low completion rates over the period of the several years. See the discussion of the persistent with a significant failure to perform below. Rather than specifically um, specifying the detail of the implementation program performance standard for the registered apprenticeship, we believe the best since Hatchie 2960 is the um, establish the regulatory framework to provide the basis for the Office of Apprenticeship to issue the more detailed guidance for the Office of Apprenticeship. will consult the apprenticeship program sponsored with the recognition of the state apprenticeship agency to develop an issue of the guidance regarding the program performance and standards and accountability in a national apprenticeship system. This consolation process would also be to represent the um, response of the common interest recommendation for further discover the provision completion rate for the interested stakeholders well, approach with the similar Department of Regulatory Frame and the performance management system established for the programs under the Workforce Investment Act. The Department disagreed with the assertion of the relationship between the bid requirements for the state and local contribution construction project with the provision of the completion rates for the statute 296B with the state, which will likely have the annual impact on the economy exceeding $100 million. No more of the, none of these provisions in the final statute 296, nor any other provision in the final rule provided for the relay of the establishment bid for the requirements for the state and local construction projects. Cancellation of apprenticeship with the apprentice agreement during the probation period. Many of the commenters oppose the provision statute 2960D uh, will provide for the cancellation apprenticeship agreement with the probationary period would not have an inverse impact on sponsor population rate with the commandment to say that all the cancellation cancellation should be considered in the program review, particularly to determine the program sponsored with the registered program primarily to meet the contract requirement of the federal works of the projects under the Division Bacon, Davis Bacon Act. Response existing regulation provided with the probation period and recognition for the both the apprenticeship response for the apprenticeship should have sufficient time to determine the apprenticeship agreement is beneficial during the probation period. The apprenticeship may have many reasons for the cancellation agreement, which may have nothing to do with the program, including the apprenticeship agreement with the cancellation during the probation period for the cancellation of, you know, of completion rates that inadvertently caused the program sponsors to adopt more stringent selection requirements in any effort to minimize bidding spent minima being penalized. More of the stringent selection requirements could reduce limited apprenticeship opportunity that would otherwise have been available. 
available. We seek to avoid the regulatory framework that would unitar un unintentionally reduce apprenticeship opportunities out with the registration agency. Do you include the cancelization rates, important information, and their insight oversight of the registered apprenticeship site programs? Cancelization rates include these, um, those of the occurred during the probation. Period of review in conjunction with the Equal Opportunity Act of compliance with the review of the appropriate registration agency of the information provision technical assistance. Therefore, we have determined the proposal for the cancellation apprenticeship agreement not to have adverse impact on the sponsor for the completion rate if the cancellation occurs during the apprenticeship probationary period. It is an appropriate balance between the need to hold the program sponsor accountable with the need to promote the apprenticeship opportunities. We have made no change in the statute 296D. All right, apprenticeship agreement. Um, I'm going to cut the tape.